Okay. Well, thank you so much for, um, you know, volunteering your time and, and participating in this. I know it's a really helpful way to, um, you know, give to the, the stewardship campaign right now. So to get started, can you share your name and your occupation? Yes, I'm Kana and I work in human resources uh, uh, for uh, our local school district. Nice. And can you share a little bit about your religious background? Yes, I um, essentially, my parents met during the Vietnam War. And so uh, a lot of uh, my religious upbringing was uh, centered around traditions that my mom brought uh, up with me uh, as a Buddhist. And so uh, I grew up in a logging camp in Southeast Alaska. After my parents got married, my dad moved to Southeast Alaska because his parents were working in a logging camp as cooks. And so um, I then got acquainted with uh, kind of more what um, I guess it would be Catholic, you know, the Catholic religion, because the owner of the camp, his wife would bring in priests and bishops each month to hold mass. And so I was always very interested in uh, learning more about um, religion and just, I had this spiritualness within me that I always felt uh, like drawn to being in community with others. And so I would go to the mass on my own without my family because they were not Catholic. And my dad was uh, in support of that. And then um, when I went off to um, college, I ended up going to Northwest Nazarene College because when we moved from the logging camp to Sitka, Alaska, I uh, got acquainted with the Northwest or the Nazarene Church uh, through the doctor who had delivered all my siblings and myself. Um, and so then attended Northwest Nazarene College and uh, went to chapel and church uh, through the Nazarene Church and then started, you know, having some things that I was going through in terms of my own processing and understanding of religion, organized religion and what I felt, uh, what I believed was important. Uh, kind of in that time when you're going through college, there's a lot of things that you're also starting to recognize and go through your own self-discoveries. So I then um, started going to a Methodist church uh, when my husband and I uh, were married and we went there for two years and then moved to Japan and then uh, continued in a smaller uh, church setting there in Japan for two years with a uh, husband and wife and their family who were missionaries there and always felt drawn to a sense of community with church and then we moved back to Idaho and um, continued at attending uh, Methodist churches until we moved to Oregon in 2004. We also continued to attend Methodist churches and then we bought our first home and we're starting our family uh, here in Hillsboro. And we really decided like it was important as a young family to not be, when we were not married, when we were married and didn't have children, having to, you know, take 20 minutes or 30 minutes to drive to a church didn't seem like a problem. But when you have a new child and our son Jeff came to live with us uh, when he was a year old, and we adopted him we decided like we wanted to be like five minutes or 10 minutes from our it makes our a church. big difference i'm sure yeah 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 so uh, we started attending um the hillsborough ucc and then um you know just got more involved and acquainted mm -hmm. uh with the community and just felt really um welcomed through that experience and jeff started going there you know when he was um you know, about just over a year old, and then now he's 14. So we've been attending, you know, since that time and um, became involved in the church. I hope I answered your question. Absolutely. Yeah. So it's, you had quite, quite a few different experiences before kind of settling in the UCC. And yes. it sounds like you've been a member about what, 14 years now or 13 years? Yeah, somewhere, somewhere in there. And I would say anywhere between, I can't remember if we attended, I it, honestly, I've forgotten when we first became members, but it was shortly after Pastor Diane Doolin offered uh, a class and uh, we went and attended. And I want to say maybe Jeff was like, maybe, maybe it was a year or two later after mm -hmm. we had started attending. Mm -hmm. so. And what is it that, um, or what parts of our church life do you find most meaningful? 
You know, I, I really think it's uh, the community sense and the service oriented uh, attitude of our church uh, and also making uh, people who come from all different walks of life feel welcome there. And that was one thing that really impressed me from the start for my own journey being there is feeling welcome. And then also just seeing that, uh, that, that welcoming attitude um, for folks um, no matter who they are, come in. And I just think that to me has been um, that warm and welcoming and nurturing community sense um, that has, you know, just infiltrated, you know, like from the kids to adults to people, you know, at different, in different uh, journeys of their life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. With all your um, experiences, have you come to develop a favorite Bible verse or story? Yes, I would say that my um, favorite Bible verse is uh, Colossians 3.14, and it talks about like how love unites us all. And I really believe that um, when we come from a loving space and we come from a space of grace that we can extend to each other, um, I think it really helps us to be our authentic selves. Uh, to be our vulnerable selves and be connected as a community. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's a nice one. Can you share something that folks might not know about you? Um, I, uh, when I grew up in the logging camp, my, uh, my dad uh, used to blow up rock on the side of the mountains to build the gravel road uh, for loggers to extend uh, logging. And uh, when we were living in one of the logging camps uh, that I grew up in, he came home with a baby deer who he had found out in the forest that um, was not doing well. And so for a summer, we had a pet deer <laughs> growing up, which was um, very interesting because she was like a dog in some ways. You know, she followed us around um, and uh, became a part of our family. And when we le left that logging camp, it was really hard to leave her because it was like we had to let her go up on her own. And so I always think of like, I hope she. I hope she survived and did well. No so. kidding. Oh, wow. <laughs> what a unique pet. That's cool. Yeah. Cool. So I wanted to ask next, um, how and why um, do you support our church financially? You know, we, that, I, that's a really good question. And I think um, it's taken me a while to kind of process my thoughts around that. But I think for me, it's the you know, we tithe um, each month because we believe we've been blessed and we want to share that blessing that we've been afforded to support the church, not only its physical, the physical building of the church, but also the spiritual and community ministries that the church um, helps uh, within the community and outside of the community on a worldwide level. And so I think um, I've just seen that um, when I, when I can uh, pass forward or you know, move that blessing that I've had in my life onto others, then I feel like uh, there's a sense of meaning and purpose to my own giving and to our own giving as a family. Absolutely. Yeah. And what would you say to others who are considering supporting the church? I, I think um, that's another great question as well that I've been uh, pondering on. And I, I think, you know, you have to listen to your heart and what it's telling you to do in terms of sharing. And I think some people, um, they give their time and their energy, and that's the way that they give uh, to the church because that's what they can give. Um, I just think the blessings that you can give, you know, whether it's financial or whether it's your time and energy or the support that you can give, uh, whatever you feel that you're being drawn to do, then uh, I think listening to your heart and what God's telling you and speaking to you is what you need to do. So I don't, what I'm trying to say is I don't think I'm here to say this is what you must do and this is how you must do it. But I think by listening, you know, to what you feel drawn to give uh, can make an impact on the church um, in whatever way God uses us as vehicles to share that, um, that giving. Sure. And it's, it's unique for each person. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so how exactly did you decide what to give with your family? 
I think one of the things that uh, just over time uh, in the blessings that we have been afforded financially as a family, um, we felt that it, you know, giving a portion of what we've been given uh, allows us to um, see how we're making a difference in our community with, I know that, you know, the that some of the funds goes to help with um, even just some of the changes and remodeling that's happened to the church. We've been a part of that process. And so it's nice to see in that, um, to see that, that there's that impact, but I also see that there's an impact um, just by what we've been given to give back to the church, um, you know, in other ways. And so I think uh, for us, you know, we are, we try to give, uh, a percentage where we feel like is making an impact uh, for what we've been blessed as a family. Mm -hmm. And if you're comfortable saying, do you give weekly, monthly, or annually? We give monthly. And I think for us, uh, that goes in line with kind of like, you know, uh, for us budgeting uh, those pieces as we get paid monthly, then we can give monthly. And we typically um, pay at the end of the month. Um, mm -hmm. after we have uh, had our payday and, and those things to um, be a part of our budget. Sure. And how right now have you been personally impacted by COVID-19? I'm sure working at the schools, it's been quite a, <laughs> quite a change. Yes. I, um, I am, uh, being in human resources, I'm about the human connection and uh, being a, an educator, I really feel that that connection is so important as we serve our students and families. And I feel like the impact of COVID-19 is that we are, there is a distancing that's happening because we have to do the physical distancing. But at the same time, there's also this, um, better understanding that some of our staff are getting to see around what's going on in the lives of our students because now we're seeing into each other's homes and what's going on and finding out you know uh, what is needed you know of our students at this time and there I really think a lot of that focus on social emotional well-being uh, has come to light even more so through this COVID-19 experience. Absolutely. So, Lots of birds. Is, <laughs> it's nice. <laughs> what a beautiful day out, huh? Yes. Mm -hmm. So finally, what is one hope or prayer that you have for our church in the next year as we grapple with this impact of COVID-19? Mm. I think my prayer would be that we would um, find ways to connect with each other, uh, even though we I, I think um, that physical proximity is something that we don't have right now in the sense of like when we actually go to our physical structure to, to worship together and then we walk over and we have our coffee hour together, there's those physical connections that we have and those conversations. And so um, I hope that we can continue to be connected as a church, uh, even though we're having to look through uh, the lens of um, how we keep physical distance as well in, in the space of mm -hmm. what we're trying to do as a community, but still be connected to each other and find ways to um, make sure that we're connecting with people that may not feel uh, it is as easy for them to connect in this medium of like mm -hmm. Zoom or, you know, uh, going on line uh, through social media to connect. So just trying to find ways. And I think one of the things I've appreciated is I've received, I have received some phone calls from church uh, community members. And I think um, that just that even that phone call and those connections um, help people to know that, hey, you know, how are you doing? And what do you need? And I, that's the spirit of our church that I've always appreciated. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I hope we can continue that to that connection even, you know, as this carries on. Yes. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for sharing um, and, and taking the time to chat today. It's been really nice. Um, nice to chat with you. Same here. Mm -hmm.